All right, listen to this. How, how much more obvious could it possibly be? The basic composition of hematite in its pure form would be 70% iron, 30% oxygen. However, rarely found this way. Those are the blueberries. Shale or silica can be found in layers with the hematite. When this occurs, it's called banded iron formations. Let's see if we can find some on Mars. You see that? Those are iron balls. Those are hematite balls. They are in the blood. Blood is iron. <laughs> that's what blood is. It's iron. You see that? That's, that's almost all hematite and magnetite and blood. It's ferrous oxides. FeO2 and FeO3 are your blood gases. And they're the blood. This is an iron meteorite. You see it? This came through space. This, was a, this is an iron meteorite, but it was a lung at one time, loaded with blood. And now all, it's, all of the fascist stuff has burnt off, and now you're down to, to magnetic hematite and magnetite. Now, these are huge. These balls are the balls that they're talking about, these black balls. And the rest is a gooey, fleshy stuff, and here it is right here. You see this? These are the balls. They're small up on Mars, and they're small here on Earth mainly, too. This is, happens to be Hunstanton Beach in the um, United Kingdom. And this is mucosa. You see it? And this is the red, bloody, fleshy interstitium. And these are the balls eroded away. And the rest turns into mud, red clay mud. The same thing that's on Mars. No difference whatsoever. And there's an artery up there, which is called the Mars Crab. Let's look at that. Because this has to be fed with blood. All right, this is when I really got involved. This is Curiosity up on Mars. And this is what they call the Mars Crab. And he said, what the hell is that? Look at all these little legs coming out of this thing in the middle. And what's this little tube up the top of it? I can tell you exactly what it is. This is an artery. These are blood vessels going in to service the tissue. And that's the vein bringing the blood back up to be recharged. This is the eroded red blood cells. This right here, are, these are sarcomeres. You see these boxes of tissue and all the little stripes in between them? Remember when it said silica and shale is in between the hematite? Well, that's connective tissues. And that, my friends, is muscle. And that, vein, that artery right there is servicing the blood and that's why it's the red planet because it's eroded into its its um, blood cells all right this is a chunk of muscle that's here in my shop here's the red blood here's all the these are all the different layers of muscle tissue this is the tendon that goes from the abrupt transition here over a t tendon into the muscle up here would have been where the crab was. The legs would have come out all over the place. It's eroded in here. And there's another one that eroded away and eroded away. This is, it's all, everything that I can find, 100% of everything, started out as biology. Remember I showed you up on Mars? Where they had the Mars, the Mars um, um, crab? That fed these. These are the sarcomeres. These are the muscle tissues. You see this one slid over? They can move on top of each other, and they move this way. You see, these are pulled together. That's how muscles work. There's bands in between them that will erode away. And that's what those cracks are. And all of that bloody tissue has eroded away into the red planet's red dust. All right, just another little shot here. It erodes right here. It erodes right here. They erode right here. And this red gooey stuff erodes out. And you're left with these these little blocks of fibers. They're, they're the connective tissue. I can't imagine there's any possible way it could be more obvious. There's the, the Mars crab right there. There's, that's what's feeding all of this tissue. These are the blocks. I showed them extremely... That's exactly what they are. There's, nobody can fight that. Not only that, you saw the Mars blueberries. That's these right here. Guess what these are? Those are the interstitium straps that pull and bring back. These are the things that bring your skin back the way it's supposed to be, like up here. This is pinched together. That's pinched together. This is pulled apart. 
That's how your skin can stretch and move and come back to where it's supposed to be. And that's what that is. It's called the Mars Morse Code. See, here's your Mars hematite. Those are the blueberries. Those are those hematite little balls that anchor all of that gooey stuff so that it comes back to where it's supposed to be. That's the basement layer of skin. All right, this is here on Earth. These are stone balls. These are the hematite, same thing. And this is the mud that runs off from the eroded flesh. This is the basement layer. They're laying on it. This is not a big mystery. All right, this is what the stone balls are. There's a t little strap attached to them that breaks off. That's where it holds it in so you can stretch and come back. See, if you look carefully, you can see where, the, where they were attached. You see them? They're, they all have that attachment. It's, it's just eroded away because those, that's not the tough spot. Those have to stretch and be gooey. These are the hard things. All right, I just want you to be perfectly certain you understand. The banded iron is muscle. This, with these hematite balls, is the interstitial. It's right below the surface layer, even on lungs and on your heart and on your kidneys. They have a fabric bag that wraps right around them. This is that. This is that. Simple as that. You see that? These things are gigantic. They're everywhere. They're all over the earth. They're all over everywhere. And that's the stalk. And this is, this is the rust color of, of blood, of iron. You see that? That's another style of tendon ball that has these anchors inside where it can flex a little bit. All right, it looks like that's the spot right there that it attached. And that's why they can stretch and bring you back. Let's see, we had one here. All right, this is the same kind of ball. It's extremely eroded. Lee Simpson, a friend of mine, sent me this. And the pockets are just eroded out. But this is the kind of ball that could give a little, little movement, it appears. Now, I don't know where that is in the body. But it's not in... The, the interstitium is right underneath the topmost layer of skin. And right under there is where you have to be able to stretch and come back and stretch and pull and do all these kind of things. And it's on every single organ is their interstitium. Every organ has to be able to move and be pliable in its own way. Now, I don't know where these are. They might be from the lung. They might be from the kidneys. I don't know. I have no idea. But every one of them has its own, has its own interstitium and its own fascia. And that fascia is what keeps it pulling back. Like this is fascia on this rock. That's, that's meat. That's meat. And that right there is the fascia flap. You see that flap right there? I'll show you another shot of it. I'm going to call that the spurlock. <laughs> I just talked to my doctor about it. He said, well, as far as I know, they just call it fascia. Well, from now on, that specific spot right there, that little flap, is going to be called the spurlock. And that holds bodies together. Alright, you see that? That's living fascia. That's the spurlock right there. See, it's torn. It's, it's, ripped, it's ripped off. Now, it's, it's beginning to get ripped off. Now, this is a lung. This is a human lung and it's being DNA certified and tested. You see that flap coming around? That's this flap right here. That's this right here. That's the fascia spurlock. And I have them in all of my lungs. You see that? There's another one right there. That's the spurlock. They all are flat on one side. There was a great flood here at one time. Everything died and as flat as a pancake on one side. Same with this lung. You see that? Now, why would this lung be preserved like this? It's something called... Um, it's, it's... Boy, this is hard to explain. But in the right conditions, bodily parts will harden up solid on their own, just like this. This is out of, a, out of a body. That's the top right there. That's where the lung attached at the top. This is where the lung attached at the bottom. This is that, uh, that um, tab. The same as the tab on this one. This one ripped apart at the top, so you can't see it quite 
well, you see it a little different than you see this one. But that's the only difference is that this one is started to rip its its coating off. This one did not, not at all. But it still has the same flap, and it still is made out of the same materials. You see that? That's stone fingerprints. All right. This is a giant fingertip. The fingerprints are on the other side. Obviously, this is the fingernail. This was DNA tested, and it said that the DNA that I extracted from that was excellent quality. And here's what the fingerprints look on the other side. You see that? That's the fingerprints. You see that? That's the fingerprints. Just like I showed you before. I have a better shot, I think. Hold on. Yeah, there it is right there. They call this grip skin. It's, it's, it's the stuff on your fingers. It's just fingerprints. Same as this, just like I showed you before. This just popped right off. It peels right off just like it does here. I smacked it with a hammer, poof, popped right off. That, my friends, is a gigantic fingerprint, which my thumb is the size of one of those fingerprint ridges. And the reason I had to smack this off of there, because you can't get blood out of there. The blood is down inside. See, this is like a rubber co coating over the top. I had to go down inside and it's saturated with blood. You see how much blood is down inside the fingertips? Once you get past that outside layer and you get inside, it's just saturated with blood. These are the terminations of your arteries and your veins. The arteries come out, the veins come back. Now, I'm just going to leave you with this. This is Fingal's Cave world's most popular sea cave, Isle of Staffa, Scotland. This is by Monira's Vlog UK. What do you see here? You see a cradle at the top with all this gummy, gluey stuff. And what do you see here? You see a bunch of little strips of what I'm saying is tendon. And then they turn into muscle right below it. Let's see if we can find that. This cradle turning into tendon, turning into muscle. I say this was a creature standing here and everything above eroded away and this is what's left. Now there is some serious articulation in your limbs and fingers and toes and you know your knee and your pelvis and all that. Let's take a deep dive right into here. You know most tendons have an abrupt transition you see you see how abrupt the, the tendon goes out and then the muscle takes over. And that's what we see in Fingal's cave. You see the cave is nothing more than a separation of tendons so that it can rock and so forth this and that way. There was some form of a, a ball or socket or whatever up in here. And this is muscle down here. This is the tendon and this was the anchor. This is the glue. These different colors are colors of blood chemistry. By the way, Stonehenge was a tribute to a giant. That's the giant's foot. And there was another one right next to it. They call it the twin. It's gone. Somebody took it. That's where the vein, or, uh, the vein blood comes down. These are the actual toes. You see these little spots at the end? That's where the blood goes from the, the artery over to the vein. This is a foot. And, and all of the stones at Stonehenge are body parts.